Behold, an iMac, an all-in-one computer launched back in 1998 and relaunched in 2002, and 2004, and 2007, 2009, 2013, and 2014, and 2017. We're going to focus on these, the 27-inch displays, which is a fairly common display size. These are 2560 by 1440. For the retina displays, each dimension is doubled, but the size of everything on screen is generally the same, just higher pixel density. But as designers, we often design on displays that aren't 27 inches, especially on laptops like the MacBook Pro. Sometimes when we're looking at content in a website like this, it looks great on the smaller devices. But when the browser is stretched out on a larger device like the iMac, things don't look so great. There are two things that are going on here. Sections, the sections holding our content, look too wide, and containers, which keep our content towards the center, they look too narrow. So two problems, that means two solutions. For our wide sections, we're gonna cover one thing, a wrapper that wraps around the sections, keeping everything from spilling out to infinity. For our narrow containers, we're going to make a custom responsive container, which keeps all our content neatly organized and centered. So here's a basic layout. In our page body, we have a section. In that section, we have a container. And in that container, we have our content. And sections are just divs. They take up the full width available to them. That's why on larger displays, they seem to go on forever, because they do. And what we can do is wrap our sections with a div, a div that serves as a parent element to those sections. Now, we're using the Webflow Designer for this, but if you're hand coding, we'll show the code we're outputting here to the right. We can just add a div, we'll put it right into the body element, and we can simply put our content inside. Everything is getting transplanted into that div block. On that div block, we'll set some values, but let's give it a class to keep things organized. Wrapper. And we'll do three things. We'll give it a width, we'll set our width to 100%, that's full value. We'll make sure the div block is centered. We can set both the left and right margins, both of these, to auto, that'll center it. And finally, we'll set a maximum width. We'll set our max width to something in pixels. We can try different values here. Maybe we'll land on something like 2000 pixels and nothing changes. Why? Because on this particular screen capture, 2000 pixels exceeds the width of the viewport. What would this look like on a 27 inch iMac? Like this. But to verify what we're doing is working, we can temporarily set a lower value in the designer, like 1000 pixels. And when we're done testing, we can switch it back to something else. Maybe we wanna land on 1800 pixels. So. We've created our wrapper, and since it's a class, we can add this and use that class on different pages throughout our project. Now, what if we don't have a 27-inch iMac available? Sometimes we don't have access to a giant display. One of the great ways to do this is to change your zoom settings. You can do this right in your browser. And by setting a smaller percentage here, you're getting a pretty good estimate of what things might look like on a larger screen. It's not perfect, but it's a good alternative to going to an Apple store to test your designs each and every time you make a change. That's the wrapper. What about the container? The default container, the included container element, looks too narrow for your content on larger displays. You can create your own and reuse it throughout your project. Let's use another div, just a quick div block. We'll put this inside our sections. And once we've placed it where we want it, we can drag in all our content. All our content is inside the div. Let's style it. First, what will we name it? You can name yours whatever you'd like, but for clarity, we'll call ours custom container. Same three things we used for our wrapper, just some different values. We'll start by setting a width of 100%. That's full value. We'll center the element by setting the left margin and right margin to auto, setting the same thing to both sides. And we'll set our maximum width, a max width of maybe 1200 pixels. And if we test, it looks a lot better than the pre-made container we used before. That's our hierarchy. Inside our body, we have a wrapper, which prevents things from going too wide. We have sections, which divide up our content. And now we have our custom div container, which keeps everything neatly organized towards the center. But what happens when things get too narrow? What happens when we get to normal screen widths? What happens when we go down to tablet devices and mobile devices? The content goes right up against the edge. So let's set some padding. In the Webflow Designer, we're setting both sides at once by holding down the Option key and dragging our padding control. The result, some nice space on the sides. 
And of course, we can reuse our custom container class anywhere. We can use it on different pages and different sections, and we'll want to because things look great on each smaller display. And we can rest assured that our content doesn't simultaneously look too wide and too narrow on larger displays. But that's using wrappers and custom containers when designing web content for larger displays.